Welcome to the platform. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Togsy along with the Wiz, Warwick Kappa. I'm the Wizard Kappa, in case you've been living on Mars, Togsy. Yeah, you like have, that one? We have a very special guest in Michael Chevello. How are you, bud? Good on you, Great to be here, boys. Togsy, Caps, good to see you guys. <laughs> We've got him on again. Good, good to see, see you guys. We've got him on again. He's back in town. Great, great like to be here. Hair. I like his haircut too. Yeah. Yeah. See, so he tried to grab hair then. There was nothing there. It's just chrome <laughs> done, yeah. shaved yeah. up for the show. <laughs> Before we get into, uh, I'm sure, it's going to be some fun stories, let's have a look at The Voice in action. The Voice. Moroccan bad boy could beat the sun in a staring contest. More combinations than a McDonald's menu. He's had more kick than a chorus line. These men do not like each other. It is ready to explode here. about that, Michael. I love that voice. Good night, Irene. Some good memories there. Some good memories. That was like when I was fighting um, Wendell Salem. I said, good night, Wendell. And I thought he was Danny West Trap and went, boom, bo, bang, go, boom, bo, and I went down like a heap of shit. We love your voice, though. So. Thank you, mate. Where did it all start, Michael, for you? How long ago? You know, uh, I started commentating. My first thing I ever commentated was track and field at the old Olympic Park. It was the APS Athletics, the inter-school meet. And it was that? in uh, 1990. I think I was 15 or 16 years old. Wow. And then after and that, that? I, I started doing some soccer on local radio. And then after that, um, when I was 21 years old, or no, even 20 years old, a local kickboxing commentator said to me, do you want to commentate my show just for my video in front of 100 people at the that? Sunshine Macedonian Youth Centre out in Sunshine? And now, okay? I, and now I heard your ratings, you're going to the 35 million people, 173 countries. These days, 35 million Heaven's people, that. 138 countries. So it's just, it's amazing the way He's life well goes. He's as well known as Kappa. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one's that well known, but um, we can try. The, the journey you've had, you've done everything. You've done like, you know, Muay Thai around Australia, kickboxing, mm. and then you went over to the States. What were some of the things that happened to you in the States? Because you had a TV. TV show over there as well. What's your favourite? Yeah, uh, you know, I spent seven years in the States and did a lot of great fights over there. And uh, we did the Voice versus TV show, which was a lot of fun. I got to travel around and experience America and experience the culture and the people over there and had some fantastic times. And like everything in life, it, 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 it serves its purpose and it comes to an end and uh, we were having a, a second child we wanted to come back here to Melbourne to raise the kids. Already had one that was born in America, yep. my oldest son. But um, the US is good. But nothing like being back home with family and friends and, you know, grandparents and, and, and that sort of stuff to raise the kids. So uh, we decided it was time to come back to Melbourne. Well, yeah. now you're doing one championship. We'll yeah. talk about that shortly. But you're doing some amazing interviews on a show called, is it 1v1? Yeah, one-on-one -on -one with The Voice. Uh, so we did The Voice versus in, in the USA, yeah. which is a one-hour sit-down show in the US. And uh, I wanted to bring the same idea to one championship yeah. who I'm now working for and interview their athletes in a whole different light. Not the stock standard questions that the, the marketing people usually ask, but getting into the nitty gritty of their background and some funny questions and you know, left of center questions. Getting their, head, so, getting their heads a bit. Yeah, getting their heads a little bit, like exactly. And it doesn't heads. get exactly. much bigger than uh, Angela Lee. Angela Lee's the biggest star in one championship, you know, and one you, of the biggest female stars in the world. You spoke with her? She was the very first guest and she was lovely. She and nice? we, we had a, she's fantastic. Really, really good time. She married? You know what? She just got married. She just got married about a month ago. Had her honeymoon in Santorini. Sorry, Cap. I love Santorini. Yeah, I'm taking. You get past her husband, and he's also a fighter I'm named Bruno it, Pucci. So he's, he's pretty damn tough. I was just going to have a casual glance. I'm, ta <laughs> I'm taking myself. Looking, but that touching's good. Well, let's have a look at uh, the voice with Angela Lee. The voice. And you're not the only martial arts athlete I've met that has two very distinct personalities. It's almost Jekyll and Hyde. Do you think that sort of split personality is particularly common in martial arts athletes? I think so. I mean, I don't think that someone can walk around 24-7, always on edge, getting ready to fight, you know? Um, that would just take a lot of energy. So having this kind of dual personalities, um, when I'm inside the cage and outside the cage, it helps to keep me balanced. It helps me um, to, it allows me to be, you know, who I am all the time. Tell us yeah. about the One Championship, Mick. Mick. One Championship, going? It's, it's huge, mate, absolutely huge. You know, they're the biggest martial arts organisation in the world. Uh, when, when people think of mixed martial arts, you think of two organisations. The Western Hemisphere, you think of UFC. In the Eastern Hemisphere, you think of One Championship. Broadcast to 138 countries. We, we peak at about 35 million viewers. So it's it's massive. And, and they're, they're chasing NFL numbers. You know, Chatri Sichitong, the CEO of One Championship, the founder, came out at a press conference in Tokyo a couple of weeks ago and said, we're not chasing 
anyone else, any other fight promotion, we're chasing NFL figures. In four years' time, we want to be doing NFL figures. And they're already the largest sports media property in Asia. They're the most, the, the fastest growing sports media property in the world, and they're going to get there. And, and you know, Togsy, you've asked me before about Chatri Sitchitong. Yeah. Let me tell you a bit about this guy. Chatri, I think, is about 47 years old, so he's only a long, young bloke. Yeah. But he, he, he grew up um, in, in a, in a you know, normal uh, family in, in Thailand. And yeah. when the financial crisis hit Asia, the family lost all their money, yeah. wiped out. And the dad left the scene, okay? Couldn't handle it, so he left the scene. So Chatri's mother somehow got him to go to the USA for his schooling. Yeah. He went to the USA, ends up at Harvard, How'd okay? Go? Gets, it, gets it, an MBA right? in, uh, in, I think, in finance. Then works at a hedge fund on, on Wall Street, managing a $500 million hedge fund. But wasn't his mum living with him at the dorm? Had his mum living in the Harvard <laughs> at the dorm, <laughs> was surviving his, had no money with which to even eat, was surviving yeah. living on $4 a day uh, you know, out of Harvard for, for a couple of years, gets his MBA, ends up managing one of the biggest hedge funds in the world on yeah. Wall Street, and then turns around when he's in his 30s and goes, I don't want to do this anymore. Speaking yeah. of great stories and your commentary, I reckon you could pretty much commentate anything. Do you agree? Like, I reckon I could give anything a crack, a fair go. Because I found this video online I thought was rather interesting about these two, it was these two bugs. Bugs? Having, yeah, two yes. bugs having a fight. And I thought, that's really <laughs> kind of cool. We thought and of you we commentating put, it. Be hilarious. All right. I put it together and I thought maybe you could have a crack at it. Would you mind? Let's yeah. go for it. Come on. Let's have a look at uh, the bug footage it. and you commentate it. The bug it. footage. This is alive and a happening. Have a look at this big fella with these enormous arms. These two have been bugging each other all week and now it's time to throw down. Here come the left hooks with the reach like that. We could call the guy on the right of screen Insector Gadget. Left hooks and right hands. Another left hook. He's got more hooks than a pirate convention. And there's a knockdown. How about that? He's down for the count. Does a 180. Flips back up. The big fella right on top of him. Right hands now. Another right hand. Another right hand again. He's got more rights than Amnesty International. And the little guy on the left of screen had a whole lot of bother. He tries to pull guard. The wings came out. Did you see that? The wings came out. He tried to fly away. There's no <laughs> flying away in the fight game. You can't do that. He's taking enormous punishment here. <laughs> He's taking an absolute shellacking. Here come the rights again. Here comes another left hook. More hooks than a tackle box on the big fella. The little black bug trying to crawl away, trying to get out of harm's way. <laughs> this one's over. It's, it's going <laughs> Thailand to make a living off that, you know. <laughs> Commentating bugs, and I'll cook them up and eat them up. He's it's got good. more hooks in a pirate ship. He's got more lines of it than these fishing boat, this bloke. Oh, Mate, that was dear. awesome, Michael. Thank you so much for coming thank on the show. You, good boy. to catch up again. Always a pleasure. Thank, thank you, Michael. Very much. Fantastic. Thanks. Boy. We'll see and you in Bangkok. We'll see you there. We're going to keep the combat theme coming up. We have Lillian Dickman's on the show next. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the platform, Wizard Capra and Togsy. You've been on Skype with that Muay Thai champion once again. I've been finding interviews on... The beautiful Lillian? <laughs> Lillian Dickmans, yeah. She's I... a lawyer, kickboxer, Muay Thai expert. And what else she do? Model. A model as well. I saw a story on Facebook. It's uh, very cool. And we jumped on Skype. She was in Perth. And we filmed this. Where did the passion for this start? I mean, you finished school and sort of went into modelling, I was reading. And then all of a sudden, Muay Thai comes into the picture. Yeah, so I started modelling, it was just a job while I was at uni, So, and then I just continued on, so it's been really great. Um, back then, I didn't even know what Muay Thai was. I started, it was probably 2014, when I started um, training Muay Thai just because I was looking for something to do for fitness. Yeah. Uh, I went to a Muay Thai, like a fighter's gym that was near where I was living and started doing classes there. Um, and then while I was doing the classes, I saw the fighters training and doing pads and all this kind of stuff, and I thought that was pretty fun. I'd really like to try that. So I ended up um, doing some private sessions with one of the trainers there and kind of just progressed from there. I just fell in love with the sport. You could kind of get addicted to it. And 
so then I started doing some sparring competitions. Um, you kind of just want to keep progressing and testing yourself. And so, you know, you might start sparring and then I did an amateur fight um, and then went on to do, I guess, what they call in Victoria professional rules, which is without the protective gear. Right. Um, so it kind of just evolved naturally. Um, and now I'm just, yeah, I, I love it. So, so <laughs> How soon, how soon into the training did you uh, cop like a pretty serious hit to the face? I reckon um, definitely during sparring, before I'd even done the sparring comps, um, everyone has different kind of levels that they'll go to in sparring and because there's not that many girls at the gym, often you, you're sparring guys who are bigger than you and they may not be able to control their strikes. So I remember there was one guy who hit me pretty hard in the face <laughs> quite a few times. Wow. At, yeah, I mean, you know, the first time I was like, yeah, okay, maybe just just try to ease off a bit. And then he did it again, he did it a third time, and then someone spoke to him about it. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, it makes you realise it's not as bad as it might look, um, but you obviously want to be safe when you're sparring. You don't want to be injured. So Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so who's like your heroes in Muay Thai then? Do you have any anyone that you look up to or any female fighters uh, or male fighters? Nathan, Cor- Nathan Corbett's a legend. Um, he actually also writes a fight mate, so that's sort of how I've, I've, you know, come to know him a little bit better. I had, still haven't met him in person, but he's an amazing fighter. Yeah. Uh, so now I love following his Instagram and seeing what he's up to. Um, Sanjay is probably the other big Muay Thai king who I actually was lucky enough to meet him when I was in Thailand, and he's just got the best sense of humour. I don't know if you... Follow him online. Um, he's just hilarious and an amazing fighter as well. Oh, he's a legend of the sport. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when you're watching, particularly even the training is quite intense in Muay Thai, and you're using pretty much every part of the body. Um, don't you ever get a little bit concerned? Like, I mean, you're a beautiful girl, so does it ever play on your mind thinking I don't want to damage myself? Yeah, I mean, you do need to protect your head at all times, which is the first rule for everyone, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've been lucky to not have sustained any serious injuries other than just bruising. And with modelling, um, makeup artists are really good at covering bruises. Wow. So often <laughs> it's typically just my legs that will have bruising, so that can be covered. Um, and I actually get asked that a lot. Obviously, when I fight, um, I've only had three fights so far, but I've made sure that I don't have any big modelling jobs booked for a few weeks afterwards just in case something goes wrong and I obviously need to heal. But yeah, touch wood, it hasn't been an issue. So let's go back a little bit though. Before you got into the Muay Thai, you were in Melbourne and you are uh, you're studying you're a lawyer, is that right? Yeah, so I did um, commerce law at uni um, after I finished high school and I did it because I wasn't I didn't really necessarily want to be a lawyer, but I was just thinking I should do something at uni, so that's what I chose. Um, after that, I did do my graduate year and I actually spent four years working at a large firm in Melbourne um, in the intellectual property space, which it was great. I learned a lot of um, really useful skills and, you know, it was um, it's good to have that knowledge and it has actually helped me in everything that I've done since leaving the firm, but corporate life wasn't for me. So now i um, I actually still do a little bit of legal work um, for a a firm that focuses on startups. So that's still part of my life, but just in a small way now in a very different environment. I do a lot of the work online, which suits me with all my other commitments. But what what advice would you have then, say, for young girls that might see this and think, wow, she's a cool role model, you know, fit and working on herself? Like, what would you say to them? I think... um, I definitely encourage girls to try out combat sports um, like Muay Thai. I think that it's such a fantastic way to build your self-confidence. Um, it definitely was the case for me. I think it's obviously great for fitness as well, but it does teach you discipline and it does teach you how to bounce back from setbacks um, because obviously it's difficult to training and often you're getting hit when you're sparring and things that can make you feel like you're not good enough but you can kind of rise above it and just keep moving on and progressing. So I think that that's, it's a great discipline for anyone but particularly women Mm -hmm. um, who might be otherwise a little bit intimidated by the sport. So if, yeah, if I can encourage women to do it, then that's great. That's so cool. And how do we find you? We want to follow the journey. Like is that, you got your website, tell us about that. 
Yeah, so I've got a website, lillianddickens.com. Um, basically, I just I write various articles just about what I'm up to, um, everything from my food, um, things that often people ask me about, beauty stuff, um, just updates, general updates, and um, I share stuff on social media as well, so on Instagram and Facebook. Um, just got onto Twitter recently as well. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? It's been great to uh, see a random post about you on Facebook and now have a chat and put you on the show. So thank you for your time. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, all the, best, all the best with everything you're doing. Thank you. Thanks so much. A bit like me, three things in common. Both beautiful, smart and both talented and both very famous. She's an amazing, find her? amazing story just on Facebook. And she's actually got a big fight coming up in Perth soon uh, as well. So that's going to be pretty cool for her. We might go to Perth too. Why not? Go for, go for lunch with her too. Now, you won't believe it. We're going to wrap up the show with another chat on Skype. No, again? Mate, if I'm not on Skype, I'm going to be looking at sites I probably shouldn't be looking at, so I might yeah, as well be on Skype yeah, doing it. Uh, you are a poor man's work. We're going to go to Japan, and if you're a Michael Jackson fan, you will love this because we're going to Skype with Yuko Sumida from Japan when we come back. Hey guys, Togsy here from the platform. We have a great young team of people that put the show together every week, but we couldn't do it without our sponsors, and they are Ultra Tune. Sean and the team, thank you so much for backing us. Car Lision, Huss and the guys, the best car repairs in Australia. RS Chase Lawyers, for all your legal needs, and Property Direct AU, Sam and his team will look after you. Thanks guys for supporting the platform, and now back to the show. Welcome back to the platform. I'm Wizard Cap, and that's Togsy. Heard you had a great interview with Yuko Samita, the backing dancer with Michael Jackson in the 80s. Yeah, she's a superstar, and uh, I met her in LA actually a few years ago, and she's a super, super cool lady, and uh, what a great story. I actually asked her at the beginning about how she ended up working with Michael. Have a look. Okay. Uh, my agent sent me to the audition, uh, and it was a closed audition first. It was 20 people. They already picked uh, Michael's side, already picked 20. And I was one of the 20 because I, I guess I worked with him for Black or White before the tour. Um, so they told me to you know, audition. But then uh, the dancers, uh, you know, the rumor got spread and they didn't like the idea. Um, you know, they wanted to have their choice. So it became open call. Wow. Yeah, so, but then I was late, of course, and I started from parking lot outside of the studio where the audition was uh, held, and, um, but um, I got this uh, one girl position. That's amazing, and so, I mean, for me, myself, growing up, Michael Jackson was almost my ultimate hero, like, I'm sure he was for so many people around the world. What was it like? hanging out with him and going on tour around the world with him. That must have been unbelievable. Uh, yeah, it was amazing. Um, all the places we went, um, actually the, the rehearsals, um, it just opened my eyes uh, widely because he was so genius. Um, and um, the first time I saw him, I, I met him, um, I really felt... How can I say? Like he's 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 such a like he's a superstar, but also he's like very kind, generous, maybe too sensitive human being. Right. And empathy from the beginning, from the time I met, he came to me and he said, "Nice to meet you, Bo," and. You know, at the, at the rehearsal. Um, and um, so, I don't know. It, it, to me, I was able to see his human side and also uh, superstar side. And, and it was fortunate for me to work with a guy like that for altogether six years. We make a big deal.
So let me ask you about your own personal journey then in those six years. What was the best moment? Um, wow. It's, it's hard for me to pick one, but um, hmm. I guess as a, as a dancer or performer on, on stage with him, when he said, this is your moment, you go shine. You know, take take all the um, eyes of the, the fans who are in the stadium or the venue. Um, this is your moment. Just just do what you what you can, what you want to do, <laughs> basically. Wow. And yeah, that was really. I mean, actually, at that time, it really gave me a huge pressure. You know, now I feel so honored. He really trusted me. Um, to do what I was going to do. And so what was life like for you at that time when you obviously you've been, you moved to LA for quite a while and, but you would have been the gorgeous Japanese lady that everyone would have loved. What, what was life like in LA back then? Well, I don't know about that, but, um, yeah, definitely at that time, um, I went to Los Angeles uh, it was 91, first time. Um, at that time, not many uh, dancers from Japan, only a few. Uh, and at that time, I didn't speak really English wow. very well. So uh, people thought I was just being shy, but actually, I wasn't able to speak. <laughs> 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 I was just listening. Um, yeah. so, um, if you could give yourself advice, looking back, what the things you've learned in the business, and I'm sure a lot of young girls will be watching this and watching you, what would you say to them? Well, for me, you know, just keep going. Just keep going because it's not, it, it, you know, it's the hard, the world is it's not an easy place for many of us. And, uh, but, um, you know, you just, um, you see the light, you just keep going towards the light that you see. And, um, you know, yeah, of course, uh, some people's advice can help. Yes, but you have to make your own path and you have to make your own way of going towards your light goal. And when you catch that, I think there's a next stop. That next uh, light to, to move forward to. So uh, just keep going, I guess. Nice to chat with you. Thank you so much for being on the show and I look forward to catching up with you again sometime. Thank you, Andy. So there she is, Yuko Sumida. She's uh, amazing on Skype from Japan. What a stunning lady. Absolutely gorgeous. And can't she dance? Oh, she can move. And by the way, her yoga and the stuff she does with dancing as well, she wants to come to Australia. So if anyone out there wants to bring her out here to do yoga and stuff. When she comes out, I'll do some yoga with her for about three days. <laughs> it's really good for your body. I'll try and put in a good word for you. Okay, mate. Don't forget to check out our socials, the platform tv.net. Fantastic. I'm Warwick Kappa. That's Togsy. Thanks for watching the platform. We'll see you next week. Number one show in Australia. Apparently. <laughs>